when Bloomingdale's throws a beauty bash, everyone shows. Come to B-Way. This week only, you'll find specials you can't afford to miss. And lots of surprises. Madeline Mono. My glittering gold and diamond accents put holiday sparkle at your fingertips, cheeks, and of course, eyes. And as a free bonus, Madeline's book with every $15 Madeline Mono purchase. And what's more, get a party favor full of cosmetics. From Bloomingdale's, it's like no other store in the world. Yes, Madeline has revolutionized the cosmetic industry. She put glamour back into makeup. <laughs> Look at her, I mean, she's lady. terrific. Yeah, yes. This is a hot number. Come over here, Look Madeline. Look at those Let's sexy talk. eyes. <laughs> what could be better? Okay, now Madeline is, of course, made popular the K-Gel pencil. Is that how That's you say? That's right. And uh, she really brought makeup up front. And if you can see what Madeline's look, she believes glamour is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Glamour to the grave. That's yeah. What I want to. <laughs> now, the grave later. Lots of glamour now. Now, That's what we right. do with Madeline's hair, Madeline also has fine hair, but of course she wanted a big, sexy look. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we yes. gave her a perm. You see, this is just a perm, and she just sort of lifts it and maybe touches it up with a blow dryer. And notice we left out a little gray streak. Why? Because we don't want to change Madeline. We want to make Madeline... God forbid. No! We just want to make her the best she can be. <laughs> and this is a beautiful gray streak, but we got rid of a few gray hairs up here mm -hmm. and put the shine back in that the perm might have took shine. away. What do women um, over 40 or, or, or more mature women make a mistake doing when they color their hair? Do they go too dark, too light? What do they oh, usually do when they do it themselves? Both of those. When they do it themselves, it's very hard. I would have a hard time coloring my hair myself unless I use perhaps a no peroxide hair color. Mm -hmm. But uh, the when you color your hair yourself, remember too too dark don't try to be what you were mm -hmm. don't try to be what you're not just be what you are only the best you and can pick be. up the highlights right exactly right in your in your business you're you're well you're a cosmetic she's you know, an author right she's does I mean, she said she in the New York Times said you were um, uh, what is the word tell me a legend a legend she <laughs> you're is a, a legend, legend in your yes. own time yes, yes. yes. Well, my husband says in my own mind <laughs> <laughs> That's right. well you know your own mind but has your hair color changed the way you look at your cosmetic line too for um, women my hair, you mean? Or I mean, hair coloring in general, because well, you can't have a beautiful face if your hair is not. Right. Uh, how do these colors work together, Madeline? Hair and makeup is a marriage, mm -hmm. and like marriages, you have good marriages and bad marriages. Very good. So yes. when you come to Lewis, you know you're going to have a good marriage, and if you want the rest, you have to come to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've got the right lipstick, right? <laughs> Look, we even All dressed right. together today, folks. Yeah, that's true. Well, All thanks very, very much. All right, we don't have much time. We have to All bring right. in our last Thank lovely you. lady. Thank you. Next up, we oh. have all oh, Hey, Alexa. <laughs> created a beauty line all her own and it's called Indian Eyes she's also got the solution to mascara mistakes plus homemade beauty recipes facial exercises and has written this wonderful Make Eyes with Madeline Mono let's welcome her Gosh. let's open our eyes for Madeline Mono and it is such a wonderful book too Turn oh, on Madeline's mic. Oh, Madeline, I'm so sorry. Let me just lean over here. I've been waiting to do this all day. <laughs> Thank you. Your you know, batteries are now operating, and you're ready to roll. Richard yeah. doesn't use eye makeup, but I do, and that's why I was so excited to find that you were coming on the show, because Madeline Lone was like the Thank first, you, Ove. <laughs> first word in, in eye makeup. How did you start this, what is now, a multi-million dollar business? How long do we have? <laughs> You've got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Well, uh, when I came to live in America about eight years ago, and um, I wasn't working at the time, although my previous background, I was an actress, professional actress, when I was 12 on the London stage. And, and then I had a large family. I had four children by the time I was 23 girls. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Were you so, busy? Yes, but I've got it all behind me now, you uh -huh. see. So I have, like, another life, which is rather nice, I think. Um, and then I had an antique and fine art shop. And then I came to America. And wherever I went, people would stop me in the streets and ask me about my makeup, and particularly the substance I used to line the inside of my eyes, which is called Kajal. I'll spell it for you. K-A-J-A-L. Kajal. Kajal. And you put that where? On the inside? You put it on the inside of your lower and upper lid. Uh-huh. Oh, the it's upper very too. easy to apply, takes two seconds, and the minute you've done it, girls, your whole life changes. That's it. Absolutely. I used one of Never look back. Back in the room, and it just goes on so smoothly, because mm -hmm. we've all for years heard of, not for years, but recently we've been hearing about the coal pencils. Mm -hmm. And the coal pencils, as you put them under your eye, they almost tear your lid off as you try to right. put it on there. But mm -hmm. I used your pencil this morning. It's fabulous. Is, is that the same as eyeliner? Is that... No? No, no not the same. Is it like but, one of these soft pencils? Yeah, but it's real... Mm. So you should try it. 
Well, but we'll do the inside of your eye. We'll do the inside of your eye before the oh, day's over. Oh, that'd be super. <laughs> be great. And what, because you have beautiful eyes. I don't know how tight we can get on your eyes, but you have a nice eyes. And I know that, here we go. Yeah, you're, you're, zoom in to Madeline's Your eyes. eyes were discovered. I mean, somebody saw them and you say from that moment on, you had it well, made. Who discovered that? Well, the ladies in the streets or the cheese shop or, you know, department stores, they come up and ask me about my makeup. And my husband suggested that I started my own cosmetic company. Mm -hmm. And he invested $7,500 in me. And I decided, at first I thought I could never do it. I thought I'd be crazy to go into competition, you know, with all the people around. But I'm a very determined woman. I wanted to do something for myself. And I wanted to really make my home in America, which I think I've done. So I decided that I would bring out a product that was not available here and that was different and that if it was a success, then I would build from there. Mm -hmm. So my first product was called Indian Eyes, and that was how I started. And that was with the Kajal pencil, right? Well, it actually, the first one was a little bullet, and then after that, I did the pencil. How do you start a makeup company? I mean, where do you go to find the people to make the makeup and get the colors? I mean, because your colors are so brilliant and different from a lot of the others that we you see. Start with great difficulty. <laughs> well, actually what I did, and it does sound like a bit like I made it up, but it happens to be the truth. I never knew anybody in the industry. I was completely a stranger to New York. I didn't have any friends. So what I did is got out the yellow pages. <laughs> and I found a packaging firm, and they came to visit me. And they, in turn, recommended me for someone to do my artwork. I contacted the Indian Embassy and they put me in touch with factories that made my product for me in Bombay. I got it shipped over and that was how I started. And now how, how much are sales now roughly? You don't do exactly uh, uh, We're uh, in the multi-million now. Really? Mm. What are you doing for lunch? <laughs> we have a question from the audience. Welcome to the show. Hi. Madeline, yes, I was going to ask you, how do you know what colors to use for your eyes, like for shadowing and, and your skin tones? Yeah, what determines color? What would be well, good colors for her, for instance? Oh, well, she could, uh, this lady in front of me has uh, brown hair and blue eyes and lovely pale complexion. She could wear many colors. Now, because of this question she's asked me, that's another reason that I put in the center of my book, if I could just show you here. Certainly. Right in the center in the color photography, there's a color chart. Ah. And this chart has hundreds and hundreds of colors which are can we see that? Yes, I have it on the air right Okay. Here. That will help you choose the color to what you're wearing or to your eyes and something like do that. Do you wear colors according to your eye color or do you wear to match what you're wearing? What do you wear? Them? I do things to my mood. You see, oh. now today I'm wearing a lovely orange blouse. <laughs> so I have like a, a corally orange lipstick and blusher and I have a little orange on my eyes because that was the mood I was in. Now tomorrow I might have on... What is an orange mood? Oh, it's an up, very up. Well, I'm very up today because Baltimore's lovely and the trees are in blossom uh, and it's my first visit and I'm very happy to be here, so I'm very up. Well, Maddie, we're very happy that you are up. I'll tell you what we're so going to do. So back to her question. We didn't answer her question. Her question was shades for people. I thought we had them. Okay. Carried away. <laughs> um, you could wear uh, blues, you could wear lilacs, you could wear golds and apricots and browns. You could really wear many, many colors. Which brings me to another point that a woman today should have a wardrobe of eye colors because otherwise you can't achieve different effects so as well as you should have lovely colored blouses or a pretty dress you should have a few different eyeshadows so you can change your eyes to change your mood and to go with what you're wearing for that day okay Thank you do you. have pretty eyes i might say Thank yeah you, you do, do. We're going to come back and we're going to make one eye up somebody in our audience show you how to do that at home if you have any questions madeline's the world's leading expert 41 13 13. open your eyes and look down at call <laughs> Make Eyes with Madeline Mono. We've got a book right here that she has written. That's the title of it, Make Eyes with Madeline Mono. And she is with us this morning to talk about fall eyes. And you have a whole new color collection that you're going to demonstrate, huh? Right. It's called Captures the Moment. And is there any particular color that people should be looking for well, for fall? Are, this is a little palette of colors. And but that's uh, fall colors, by yes. golly. Oh, yes. Halloween colors, almost, there, <laughs> well, for the eyes. Yes, it Where, depends how they're applied. OK, now this lady has one eye made up already right, yes. with the uh, oranges and yellows and yes. browns. You're going to do the next one. Where do you start? Well, I start with this. I call it the bee's knees. <laughs> 
and we put a little bee's knees over the center of her eyes. Tina has really beautiful lily pad eyes. What's a lily pad eye? Well, that's what Gloria Swanson has, lily pad eyes. How do you know if you've got lily pad eyes? Well, you're very, you have a very wide amount of um, brow area to work with. So lots of lid. Lots of lid, yes, that's what I was trying to say. So you put, you put the orange sort of in the middle. Yes. I, I like to think that eyes are, you know, like butterfly wings and, and that they, you can really use quite a lot of colors as long as they're well blended in. And the secret, of course, is blending with, you know, proper mm -hmm. makeup brushes. Mm -hmm as you well know from this studio. Yes, the brushes are important. Yeah. So the bright color sort of goes in the middle and then you're using that pale gold color up yes. under the brow. Right, yeah. Is there, yeah. Any, is there any use for black eyeliner this fall? Oh, well, eyeliner as it has made a big comeback this season. I'm uh -huh. going to be finishing off this makeup with uh, my new eyeliner, which is called Paints the Line. And that is, is that a dark, is that um, a black? It comes in eight different colors fantastic colors like malachite and lapis lazuli and onyx oh. and you know really super a person could get carried away with all of this oh yeah <laughs> forget about the clothes just work on the eyes well it beats thinking about the recession doesn't it it does open your eyes darling let's have a look all right close again now this yeah. is a daytime makeup that you're doing um well it depends where you're going you know <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit much for playing tennis in, but yeah. uh, it, this look with all of this color could be used for daytime, going it out could, to lunch. And yes, and you could just apply a little less of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Can you just look up again? And it all yeah. has a sheen. Yes. Does it all have a gold uh, pressed powder sort of thing in it? Right, now I'm going to show you two things. The first is I'm going to put the Indian Kajar Al. Can you look up, Tina, in the bottom of her eye? This and that's will a make... black pencil? Yes, this is black and it's called Indian Eyes Kajal, and that immediately gives her eyes, you know, a very wide and open look. And then I'm going to put this new fantastic gold metallic eyeliner. Can you close your eyes? Which is like 22 karat gold, just along the inside her lashes. Doesn't really have 22 karat gold in it, I trust, Madeline. No, no. no. All right. <laughs> Affordable gold eyeshadow. Yeah. I wish I had that in my basement. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. let me have a look and just wing it out at the end. Let's have a look. You so did that very quickly. I did. I thought that it would be a five-minute procedure to put all to duplicate the other eye, but that went on fast. I guess I must be an expert. I guess you must be. <laughs> still, I'm going to finish off now with her blusher. If a woman um, had to go out and say you only had a, a limited amount of money to buy mm. some new fall colors, right. what are the what are the ones that you would recommend buying this fall? I would re uh, recommend a set of my butterfly wings and she would get three uh, shadows in one box and she definitely needs an eyeliner this season. Mm -hmm. That's very important to give the, the new definition to the eyes. It's but eyes and lips really this season. Um, very, not too much blusher. Just eyes are a little, lot more dramatic this year, aren't very, they? Very, yes. To go with the, you know, the fabulous clothes from Italy and France. But you've done it with color instead of heavy layers of black and, and heavy yes. deep shadows. It's very Doesn't pretty. she look pretty? Yes, well, she looked good before, but she <laughs> just looks better. <laughs> Madeline is going to be at Bonwit Tellers, and that's Bonwit Tellers in Beverly Hills, tomorrow and Friday, right? Right, yes. From 12 yeah. noon to 2 p.m., and she'll mm -hmm. be autographing her book, which is called Make Eyes with Madeline Mono. And uh, will you be doing some makeup too? People stop by? Yes, they will. I will. Yes. All right. And I'll be advising them and showing them how to make eyes. All right. <laughs> very lovely. Thank you very oh, much. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. All righty. Next up, we go. Our next delightful guest has had not one, but, well, four successful careers, the most recent of which is her own cosmetic firm which she launched just uh, three short years ago. A popular movie actress in her native England, uh, she retired from that success to devote her full time to being a wife and mother to her six children. She then had her own antiques uh, business in uh, London's famed King Street, St. James, known to dealers all over the world. And when uh, she came to live in New York with her new husband in 1972, her interest in the cosmetics uh, field began to take shape. She's in Rochester this week to introduce her Glamorous Cosmetics, her line at uh, B. Foreman, the Glamorous Madeline Mono. Good morning. Good morning. Do glamorous people like you have to get up this early ordinarily? 
Well, not quite this early. About eight o'clock, I get up normally. Do you really? Yes. From what we've heard, Madeline, uh, your almost instant success in starting your cosmetic firm is really amazing. Uh, tell us how it all began. Well, it really, the whole thing was like a fluke. It's something I slipped into. I was often when I first came to live in the States, I live on Long Island, I was approached by women who'd come up to me and asked me about my eye makeup. This happened in the streets, it happened in stores, it happened in the cheese shop, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman uh, who owned a beauty salon where I had my hair done at the time, and she said to me, you'd be marvelous to give consultations on makeup. So I said, well, I've really never done that kind of thing before, but... Uh, it seemed a good idea because I'd had my theatrical background, mm -hmm. learnt all that and how to put makeup on with brushes. So I discussed it with my husband and he said, well, go on, darling, go ahead. So I did this for about three days and the women were lining up. And whatever I told them and whatever I showed them, they said, well, we want what you've got. What are you wearing? Write down the colour of your lipstick, write down the colour of your eyeliner. It was that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I would come home, and after about three or four days, my husband said, darling, this is not for you. You're going to start your own company. <laughs> I said, how can I start my own cosmetic company? I mean, it's a thing that many women dream of, to uh, be the president of their own cosmetic company. And I really had never thought of it in a serious vein. But once the idea was up there, I, uh, I think it's quite a good idea for me that I would enjoy to do that. Then I realized that if I was to start a business, that I must not be like any other company. Because in America, it's very easy to get your name put on a line of cosmetics because there is, they, they're called private label cosmetics. Mm -hmm. You can go in and the, the smaller beauty parlors do that kind of thing. But then the packaging's the same, the product's the same, and it's really nothing new. And you would then find that the bigger department stores wouldn't be interested in you. So I thought, if I'm to be a success, I mustn't be a me too, and I mustn't be an as well. <laughs> and I must bring out something that nobody else had and try and make my name with that one product. And my first product was called Indian Eyes. And Indian Eyes is the only eyeliner in the United States of America which is applied inside the eye. It actually goes inside the bottom of the eye. And uh, I packaged my little Indian eyes, and off I went to Bendel's and Bloomingdale's in New York and got my first orders. And there we are. Just, uh, it's one of those things that took off. I got a very nice write-up in Vogue magazine, which didn't hurt. No. And the letters started to fly in. And uh, then the um, Bloomingdale's at the time asked me if I would do promotions, and I used to go and promote my own product on a Saturday and then I advertised and um, I had a, in, interviewed a lot of people out of which I picked one girl called Isla Leaf who's now my director of sales training and she now trains in all the people to sell our very specialized line because whatever I've done since then and I now have 28 products and about three or four more in the pipeline mm. they're all different. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, did you ever have any qualms about starting a small business in a field of giants like, you know, Revlon, Estee Lauder? Never once. You see, my philosophy is that they too were small. I mean, Charles Revson used to package his um, nail enamel in the garage. And the Lauders used to package their cosmetics on the kitchen table. <laughs> and I think that one should remember these things. You have to start small and you have to build yourself up good philosophy. Uh, let me ask you this. What is it that, that has made uh, your beauty products so attractive to women? They're completely different from anybody else's. They know when they come up to my counter, they're going to see something they're not going to see anywhere else. Different in what respect? For instance, I was the only company to come out with a flat eye crown which is more or less like a carpenter's pencil. So you get wonderful, to make up your eyes, you've got one side is flat and one side is pointed. I mean, it's hard, I've probably got one with me, but you know, mm -hmm. uh, you could see it at B. Foreman's. 
uh, everything we do, uh, we have something new out now called Arabian Lights which is uh, it's just selling so fast we can't hardly keep it on the counter. These are loose powders which can be used on the eyes, on the face, all over the body if you're going to a party. You can brush it in your hair for gold shimmering lights and things like that. You and must have um, a, a philosophy of your own about making women more beautiful. What is it? Well, first of all, I love beautiful people beautiful women and uh, beautiful men too come to that. I just, uh, I enjoy making people more attractive. And uh, I think people, I mean, if you look good, you're going to feel good. And I imagine uh, when you're dealing personally with people, as far as application is concerned, uh, it makes you feel good when the other person feels good that they, right. that they think they look good. I get a great right? thrill from it. <laughs> uh, you've had uh, great success in some of the so-called beautiful people using uh, your cosmetics. Drop names for me. Who are some of the <laughs> elegant well, clients? Um, let me see now. Diana Ross, Connie Stevens, Connie Francis, Petula Clark, Susan Plachette, Beverly Wilson, Roberta Flack, um, James Bond's wife, what, uh, I've forgotten her name, but these uh, 007, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, Sean Connery, yeah. his wife uses our cosmetics. In fact, a funny little story, if you'd like to hear this, my elder daughter, Gail, was on Spain, um, in Spain on vacation in Marbella, and she's sitting around a swimming pool, and she's saying to the girl next to her by the pool, oh, she said, you're wearing kajal in your eyes, Indian eyes. So the woman opens up her purse, and she brings out all my products. And she says, oh, yes, yeah. she said, I got all this wonderful stuff in New York. And Gail turned around and said, that's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and this was Jay, um, Sean Connery's wife. That was a rather lovely story, funny, I think. Funny story. Yeah. And I noticed among your clients that you mentioned, uh, Roberta Flack, uh, Diana Ross, uh, beautiful black ladies. Yes. Uh, I guess to white people up until five or 10 years ago, uh, Cosmetics, we, we didn't think our black friends put them on even or anything, but the, oh, no, this the, is a big field, isn't it? I, I sell a lot of my cosmetics to black women because the educated black woman today, she doesn't even really associate herself with a black line of cosmetics. They want the best of cosmetics. They want high fashion and they want, they want smart colors. And I specialize in very dark and fashion colors. Mm -hmm. You see, I mean, look at my dress. It's very deep mauve. Now, we've got a new collection coming out in November with colors just like this. In fact, one of the colors is going to be called Mystic Mauve. I, you see, I'm more a fashion line. I'm really not into skin care yet. Mm -hmm. I will be, but I've got too much work to do on my fashion end and coloring end before I go into the skin care. What will you be doing, Madeline, at Foreman's? I'll be talking to all my customers and showing them how to apply Indian eyes, how to give them a completely new look for fall, how to shade their cheeks, how to outline their lips, how to look absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> how many products does your firm have now? You told me 20? Uh, I think we're 28 mm. today, but that doesn't mean a thing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing out things so fast. All right, let me ask you this then. What do you look for? in adding a new product to your line? I look, first of all, for originality. Has anybody else got this product? If they have, then I don't really want it. So I'm always looking to be the first to bring out something new. And uh, the people in the cosmetic industry have very uh, quickly been made aware that I'm around now and that, that I am a very innovative person. So, of course, I do get presented with things which somebody else might think would be far out and wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, you know. Whereas me, I know what my customers like. And they're looking for things that are different, and that's what I give them. I mean, we're coming out with another new product, which is just going to be fantastic. It's a body glitter, and it's in a gel, and you just put this um, glitter all over your chest and arms. It's for parties and things like that. For Christmas. You're wearing strapless gowns. Yeah. Way, right? You're going to really shine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking a little bit before, uh, while the news was on, and uh, you worked at the BBC. 
Uh, in London, that's in right. London. Years ago, I was the BBC cover girl in um, a program called Kaleidoscope, which used to be on every Friday night in London in the days when there was only one channel mm -hmm. and everybody sat around the box so that you were literally, over, overnight you were known. I, I remember going out about two days later and I was in Piccadilly to a film <laughs> show and everybody said, oh, no, 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 you know, <laughs> and it was so exciting. And I don't think that would happen today because there's so many channels now, you know. That's right. It's a, it's a different thing. Well, that happens like the Jerry Lewis telethon was this weekend yes. and, and we stage it here. And I heard, and didn't he and do Tuesday, fantastic? Yeah, and Tuesday, uh, you walk down the street, and everybody knows you. Yes. But, uh, well, I'm sure they know you. No, <laughs> well, I've been, here, <laughs> I've been here since Marconi. You know who he was. <laughs> now, you have six children. Yes. I have uh, four of my own and two stepchildren. How do you find yeah. time to do all that you do? Well, I got married very young. <laughs> I was 18 when I had my first baby. And the time I was 23, I had four children. So I've really brought up my family, and that's why I'm really now able to give my full time to my business, which, you know, if I had little ones and I was running to school every five minutes on the shuffle, you know, mm. I wouldn't be able to do what I do because the cosmetic business is a very hard business. I mean, it may look very glamorous, but everybody in the company, we, we all work very hard indeed. Well, as I pointed out in the question before, your feelings about being in competition with giants like Estee Lauder, but you said the Lauders that who've been here uh, started in the kitchen too, but uh, the, the competitiveness of it must keep you hopping all the time. It does, but that's what keeps you on your toes. And, and you're sold on your product. Yes, and you know, if, and if I know that I'm different, and I know I'm going to make it, I've known it from the day I started, and you just have to believe in yourself. It's, that's it. And if you believe in yourself and what you're doing, you can make a success of it. And that goes for anything. I mean, it's not just cosmetics. That's true. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to be single-minded in life. We thank you very much for being with us this morning. I've enjoyed it very, very much. You're just a delightful person, and you have an option to come back any time that you want to. Um, you'll be at Foreman's for what period of time? Um, 11, Today? yes. I'm going to the main store, I think, from 11 to 1 o'clock. And then there's another store. I don't have my schedule up. Pittsford, mm -hmm. uh, from three till about half past four. Mm -hmm. Have you met Mr. Foreman, Maury Foreman? No, I met the president yes. and the buyer, Mr. Lee Kirk. Oh, they're all delightful people yes, over there. Yes, yes. Thank you. Happy to have you. Happy to be here. What's the first thing that you need to know when you're thinking about eye makeup? How do you know what's right? Well, first thing you have to think is mono. <laughs> then you go from there. Um, well, it's very important when you're making up the eyes and your face is to prepare the eyes as you would a canvas, uh, as if you were painting a portrait. And the first thing I do is to apply a, a cream called Hideaway, which acts as what I call the grabber. In other words, this is what ho is a, becomes a holding surface for the eye makeup. And then the second thing I do is to put a touch Close your eye, please. of translucent face powder to set the cream. Now the eye is ready for the makeup. Because a lot of people go, you go straight to the shadow, right? You put it on, and by the yeah. end of the day, it's all gone, right? Okay. Now we're going to start with the makeup. Uh, I like to use at least three shadows on the eye. This is Taupe or Nothing from my new high stakes collection. And what we're doing now is a lovely day look, believe it or believe it Yes, not. we should <laughs> point that out. day look at Mono. Even with a little touch of glitter in it, though, I mean, is that in or was it always in? What's your philosophy about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate? Well, I like glamour, you see. I think that a woman should be glamorous at all times. I think it's very important wherever you go in life to leave a wonderful impression behind you. And even if you meet someone for a few seconds, they're going to remember that. And of course, it's all in the eyes. You know, everything's in the eyes. Shakespeare said it first. Yes, you have that in, in your book, yes. that the eyes are the uh, windows of the right. soul. Is that right? right? Now we're putting the third shadow on, which is called Copper Takes All. This is a collection for winners. For winners. <laughs> for winners, right. Susan wouldn't disagree Open with that. Open your eye, darling. She's a very good girl. 
Now we're going to put on the famous Indian eyes. Look what up. Do you look, when you're looking at the shape of her eyes, for example, mm. how did you decide what colors and, and mm. you know, what to do, how to do the various things? Well, she has very gentle coloring, this young lady. So uh, I've made her up with lovely soft four colors. The, you know, it's like blonde and a little touch of copper and very, very misty green. And uh, that's what I think is, and besides it's the, you know, this is fashion, high fashion at the moment those particular okay. colors. So you have to make a decision, A, about what right. you're trying to achieve, but also sort of look at your own complexion and your hair and what's going to blend. Right, right. I think a woman, look out please, should change her makeup with uh, the seasons. Look out. You know, nothing ages a person more if they never change their makeup. <laughs> so I I've, I've done your Indian eyes and then I'm going to put um, some mascara on her and I've used brown mascara because I think black would be a little too harsh for her. And this is a very good mascara because it curls the eyelashes at the same time as it thickens them. So does that mean you don't need the eyelash curler anymore? <laughs> Can we throw those away? Oh, no, I'm, I'm a great believer. Well, actually, I did curl her eyelashes before the show started, so I cheated a bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. How much time are we talking about in the morning to be glamorous, uh, to, you know, to, to do this, to do both eyes start to finish, to do your makeup? How much time? Well, a lot of us are working women and we have to run out and, you know, run for the bus and get the car and do all those kind of things. And I appreciate that because I also, you know, work very hard and travel a lot. And in my book, I've done the five minute makeup. So, of course, that's eyes only. That's just your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if we take the other part of the face into consideration, you know, 10 minutes should be all that a woman would need, uh, you know in the morning. For the evening, of course, when she has more time, then she can uh, put on the glamour. Now, can you look up, please? What I'm doing now is adding a little coal under the eye, dark green coal. Now, put it underneath, there. what sort of effect does that give you? Well, I'm going to open her eye up. You see, by adding that green down, I've picked that up makes this bluey green yes. of her eyes. Open up, open up, darling. There we go, there we go. See? There we are. And I'm going to put some taupe or nothing blusher on her cheek there. I can't bring my little box around, make it easy for me. Oh, sure. There we go. And voila, and that really, you did the complete eye there in probably four minutes. Didn't so. take long, did it? No, not at all. In the book, you begin by talking about some of the basics that you need for your eye wardrobe. When you're right. just starting out, what do you need? The basics of the tools or the yes, makeup? Yes, the tools. Well, for tools, you need, first of all, a very good pair of tweezers. A lot of people neglect their eyebrows dreadfully. And I believe that a woman should tweeze her eyebrows just like she cleans her teeth. Every see, day, in other three words, times a day. If, if it becomes a habit, you do it automatically. So if you have one or two stray hairs, it just takes a second. But if you wait for them to build up, it's unsightly, it's ugly, and it takes much longer, and you know, it, it hurts a little bit. So this way, do it on a daily basis. It's a question of training yourself to be beautiful. Hard work, it's hard <laughs> work to be beautiful. All right. We want to get a final look here at our daytime makeup. We will bring Susan back for just to see the finished product here, because in a moment, we're going to go night with Madeline Mona. So stay with us, we'll be right back. this morning with Madeline Mono. She's written a book by that name. She has her own cosmetics line, a former actress turned entrepreneur. And now we're going from day into night with Madeline Mono and welcome Faye Davenport, one of our directors. Very often she's up in the booth with us, but today she's downstairs getting done over. What differences do you want to look for, Madeline, when you're considering a night makeup? Well, um, night time is the time when we can go for all out glamour. And uh, as you know, that for me is the name of the game, the glamour, right? So what I've done, I've already done one eye and I'm going to show uh, your viewers how we uh, get this lovely evening look. All right, maybe we just we can get the profile there, we can show how that we've done one side already and how do you mm -hmm. achieve that, okay? Close your eye, please. See, we're starting here with, uh, it's called Lara from the Light Years Ahead collection. And I'm putting it, it, it's like a lovely, frosty, l deep lilac. There's nothing insipid about my colors, by the way. They're really... Uh, uh, they're very they're vivid. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yes, I'd say there are no right. wimpy colors in there. 
And then I'm going to add a little fireball on the center of her eyelid, you see, which is really beautiful with the, the other color. And now you say you're making a fireball, why not make a wedge or you know, the other things we've heard, make a banana, all the things that we've been told to do, why do you make a fireball? Well, because the, actually that's the name of the color, fireball, it's a planet. <laughs> okay, but it, just in terms of the sort of technique that you're using oh, well, it as, as what a What I do now, I'm going to, as you notice, all the colors, I work upwards. Some people work across. I work my colors up because it pulls the eye up. See now, all the colors are going up, and then I'll go across that way into the crease to give depth there. So is that a rule of thumb then, generally to work yes, up? You have, you, yes, right, to work up, blend it in, because obviously I want them both to be the same. <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> it does help, you know, right? Yeah, a little more fireball. Now, when you're doing your eyes, of course, your um, eyelashes get a little dusty. So it's usually best to leave the mascara to last. Can you close your eye? I like a lot of mascara. Now is that a purple no. mascara? This is a deep purple mascara which goes with all the lovely colors on her lids. This is just the first coat and probably by the time I finish she'll have four on because that's the way you get those, you know, real heavy eyelashes. I like, I like a lot of mascara. I mean, mascara and Kajal are the most important things that a woman should have in her makeup wardrobe. Why don't we talk about the Kajal? Because that's really what started it uh, for you. And right. uh, a lot of people, you know, I get a little intimidated, you know, sticking something mm -hmm. on the lining of my eye. Mm -hmm. This is what started it for me. My whole story started with this little Ooh, baby with a little bullet, bullet yeah, which uh, uh, I called Indian Eyes. Now, Indian Eyes is a Kajal, and there is a lot of confusion between Col and Kajal, which is one of the reasons I wrote my book, Make Eyes. Now, this is the oldest substance in the world for lining the eyes. Even Cleopatra had it, I mean, before her time. Um, there, there we are, right there. the yeah. little Indian there eyes. And I'm going to show you how Let me hold that. There you go. hold it up. And then I'm going to show you how <laughs> easy it is. <laughs> but I want to stick right in front of Faye's face, yeah. Mike. Let's, let's be kind to Faye. <laughs> A lot of people. <laughs> what if I hold it right here? <laughs> okay. A lot of people. All right, there we back? go. <laughs> yes, yes. We were just trying to get okay. a shot at it to show people yeah. what it was. Right. Okay, all right. A lot of people would say, oh my goodness, I could never do this to my eyes, but I'm going to show you how easy it is. Now, yes. would you look up, please? You just go like that. Whoops, here we up. Just mm -hmm. relax. I've done it before. Yeah, done it before. But that's a natural reflex. No. Yes, but they were, and it takes a second. The whole look of the eye is completely changed. Now, underneath that, I'm going to add a little mystic mauve. Look out, darling, from my iridescent Arabian light collection. And that will give just added depth as I did to the day look. I'm now doing it to the night look, but just using different colors. Can I see? Here we go. Look out. Now, by now, we're ready to add that second coat mas of mascara, if I can find it. Oh, oh here we are. <laughs> OK. Add another one, always curling up. I see, so you add a little color, put right. some mascara right. on, you yes. do something else, add right. a little more until you get the effect that you want. Yes. And everybody's in, you know, everybody knows how they like their eyelashes to look. Some people like more, some people like less. There's no rules, really. You have to do your makeup and feel comfortable with it. The, the person must feel comfortable with their makeup. That's most important. Now I'm going to add a little satin fuchsia to her cheeks. And, and then also, I'll put it just up in touch into the hairline. To give now, what does that do when well, you put it up by the hairline? That will just give her a lovely, healthy glow around the hairline, because she's got quite a high forehead, which, of course, is a sign of great intelligence. I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> so. Oh, we're going to be hearing that for months. <laughs> then I'm going to put a little Pasha pink from my Arabian Night collection on top of there with the gold in. And as a final touch for the party season, I'm adding my new diamond glitter pressed. Uh, why don't you turn that around? That is incredible. Yes. If you can get a shot of this, if you can catch yes. the glitter on this one, if you'll just right. hold it, he'll find it. It's not in front of Faye's face there this time. Go. There we go. That is, that is going there. <laughs> you can see the sparkle in yes. this. Well, That's Faye, we want to thank you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take some phone calls if you have questions about these techniques, about making eyes with Madeline Mono. We'll be right back. Our number is 432-WJLA, 432-9552. Don't go. 
Shakespeare said that the eyes are the windows of the soul, and my next guest would certainly agree with that. She is cosmetic expert Madeleine Mono, author of the new book, Make Eyes with Madeleine Mono. And she's here today to demonstrate her secrets for creating more beautiful, expressive eyes. Madeline, nice to have you here with us today. Nice and to be here. And we have a young lady with you, and uh, your name is? Julie. Julie, nice to have you. Thank you. Ever since Cleopatra, Elizabeth Taylor with those eyes, uh, eyes have become a big, big subject, and I've sold, I'm probably sure that more makeup has been sold as a result of that. But even so, women don't make full use of their eyes, do they? Definitely not. You do. Why? <laughs> but most women don't. I agree, they don't. Why is that? Uh, perhaps they're a little scared. Um, they don't know the right colors to buy. Um, fashions change now all the time, and a woman should have a change of eye makeup, just as she does to go with the new fall clothes. She has to have the new fall eye makeup to keep up to date. I guess most women do tend to wear the same makeup, mm. summer, and winter, fall, and spring. That's what dates a woman, Yes. you see. She well, has to change. We have Julie, and she doesn't have a lick on. <laughs> And what, what's, the, what's the first thing we're going to do with Julie? Or what does Julie need, in fact? Well, actually, she's rather lovely to start. But even so, I need a beautiful canvas to work on. Now, would you close your eyes? I'm going to apply a concealing cream all over her eye and under her eye. Now, a lot of women think that concealing cream, open up, Julie, is just for under the eye here to get rid of dark circles and things like that. But that's not true. If you apply this cream very gently with a, a brush, which is specially designed for it, this acts as the grabber for the makeup that is to follow, and then the makeup will stay on all day. The grabber? I call it the grabber. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> uh, My own pet word. Look out, Julie. I'm, try I'm trying to come up with a word. Well, the stick'em. <laughs> I don't know. But the point is that if you put that on there, you've got a good base right. for the rest of it. Right. See, that's... Um, all right. It acts as a... It makes a holding surface. Yes. You like that one better? Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. Then I add a little translucent face powder. Close your eye. And that will set the concealing cream so that it doesn't, you know, run. Okay? Yeah. Now, that's my beginning of... Then I'm going to start... Now, have you taken into consideration what, sh what Julie is wearing at all under this, not the brown thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. She okay. has on one of the lovely new four colors. Right. And I'm going to use my new colors on her. Right. Because the, big, right. the question is, how do you know what colors are best for you? Well, she has dark brown eyes, hazily brown eyes. So I'm going to put a little taupe or nothing. Makeup has become a lot more gentle this season than it has been in previous years. And I think for a woman to have really beautiful eyes, she needs at least three colors on her eyelids. And it might sound like rather a lot, but it all depends how they're blended in. So we started with one, and that's a rather kind of blondy, as I say, taupe or nothing. Mm -hmm. All right? Gee, Julie's got a great face, doesn't she? Good bones. Gorgeous. Then I'm gonna give her a little green with envy. Is that what it's called? Green with Envy? Yes. Oh, that's nice. I do all my own naming as well. Uh -huh. I think that's part of the fun. I think makeup is fun. But I've never heard of using three colors on, on an eye. I want them before we leave uh, today to get a shot of your eyes, because they're stunning. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All when right. we come back, we'll get a shot of, of Madeleine's eyes. See? Now right. I'm going so to now go that's on the, second the third color. one, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give her a little copper takes all. Copper is very, very big this season. And I'm going to put that up in her bone area to highlight that beautiful bone that she has. All right. Madeline is going to continue working on Julie's total look, and uh, we will take a short break. And when we come back, the final result. The eyes of Madeleine Mono. Great <laughs> eyes. Now you have the three colors on. Gold yes. going into something, and then there's almost like a peach. A, yes, a copper. A copper. Mm. Copper which takes all. Lends 
a lot of weight to this next question. Now, mm. that's got to be kind of rough on your eyes. What do you do at night? Uh, eye creams and stuff. Well, at night, a woman should always take off her makeup. No, I didn't mean keep oh. it on. I meant <laughs> no. after you take it off, because that's... Um, no, it's important to go to bed with clean eyes. Mm -hmm. Give them a rest. Right, eyes but what about eye, eye creams? Do you advise that? And if so, um, what, what type? I don't believe in eye creams at night, because I think they puff up the eyes. And anyway, most of it goes on your pillow. It just makes more laundry. Mm -hmm. You know, I had asked you about the colors, how to know mm -hmm. what, what the best colors were for your eyes. And we didn't really get a chance to explore that. What, what, is the, what should you keep in mind? The clothes you wear or your eyes, your coloring? Um, it's very important to match your makeup to the clothes you wear. Mm -hmm. And because, uh, you know, years ago, a woman would just wear a little blue. And those days have come and gone now. Makeup has become a lot more creative. People are very interested in it all over the world. It's just not America. It's everywhere. The best thing is just to try. It's trial Experiment, and error. try. And I always say, if you don't like it, go home and wash it off. Now. You spent some time with Julie during our break, right. getting her all ready. And we saw Julie before, now we're going to see Julie after. So if you'll walk around, let's turn Julie around and take a look at her. Oh, right. oh it doesn't. There we are. There's Julie. <laughs> hey. Now let's come up. Look at that. Well, I want to see before, because it's, uh, it's been a little while. There's before, and here is after. Good grief. <laughs> that looks terrific. Now, you, you had uh, mentioned the three colors on the eyes, which right. you have. You got green with envy, right. copper or something. Copper takes salt, uh, taupe or nothing. And, of course, one of the most important thing is that I put the Indian eye kajal inside her eye. Kajal? Yes. And that's lining the eyes inside right. with dark. It's Black. a little pencil, and you just uh -huh. put it inside your lower... Uh, eyelids, and that's right. what changes the look of the eyes. Well, you know, if this is any indication, there's a lot that can be done with the eyes. You look stunning, Julie. Thank do you, you feel good? Yes, I do. Huh? It looks terrific. Thank you, and thank you, man. Thank there you very much. Today on AM, Lester Hyatt with Metallic Fashions, Psychic Jacqueline Eastland, Madeline Mono will show you how to have fabulous eyes. Here's a new book out called Make Eyes with Madeline Mono, who is an authority on eye makeup and has written this book. You know, you would think, well, it would take a pamphlet. But no, it takes an entire book to tell you everything you must know about, about making up the eyes. She's working on Patty Lott right here, who is also our uh, staff photographer. And we're going to transform daytime eyes to nighttime eyes. So how you doing, Madeline? Great, thank you. We gave you a nice pair of eyes to work on today. She's gorgeous, isn't she? What are you doing right now? Well, what I'm doing now is applying my hideaway concealing cream. Mm -hmm. This goes on before all the eye makeup because a lot of women complain to me that their makeup doesn't stay on. And this acts as what I call the grabber. See, this grabs the makeup. Uh -huh. So. And you put it on top as well as underneath? Yes. See, I that's important, that. to put it on top all around the eye, blending it in. Okay, like that. Then I'm going to set it with a touch of... Close your eye, please translucent powder, very pale, or a lady could use baby powder if she wanted. That sets it. Now I'm ready. That's the beginning mm -hmm. of my canvas. Now I'm going to start using my Golden Predictions collections. This is for These nighttime are... makeup then, huh? At yes. this point you could go either daytime or nighttime after you lay right. down that face. <laughs> But and you sell this, don't you? Isn't this a right, duplicate yes. of the one your mother gave you when you were first well, starting Well, you out? did read my I book, read didn't book. you? Oh, she does <laughs> all our homework. She read my book. No, but it's yeah. fascinating. Your well, all this, this new collection that I did for summer is called Golden Predictions because all the colors have got gold mixed in with them. Because, you know, as gold and bronzes, it's very Well, we just popular. had a metallic fashion yeah, show, I and this, know. I guess, is the extension of that, huh? Right. See, now I'm going to apply the second color. Close your eye, darling. And which acts as like the contour. 
And always blow the, that extra powder out. Yes, because, because if it, that's right. right. <laughs> if you learn to do that, which ah. is, tells you in the book, it yes, stops it, it falling down here. Now, are you using the right... I know you are, but I guess she does take the colors you're putting on, huh? Mm-hmm. Can one take any color at all? In other words, do some br brunettes have to take one kind of color, use another? Well, obviously, blondes need more delicate makeup than a brunette. But it's just a question of how much you put on. You know, if, you, if you've got very gentle coloring, then put your makeup on with a light touch. Could you close your eye again, darling? Now, this, this is my golden goddess, which I'm putting up there as the highlighter. I'm coming back to Golden Sun. Finish off here. And you prefer to use the powder to the creams? Yes, because they stay on all day. And they're easy to and put on. And who can be bothered to keep doing their eyes when we're all so busy, right? Mm -hmm. So, so far, she's got three. Open your eye, please. Okay. In your book, you say it takes five minutes. You can learn how to do this in right. five minutes. Now I'm going to put the Indian eye Kajal inside her lower lid. What now, is this called, the Indian eyes? Kajal. Oh. Now, a lot of women don't know the difference between uh, Kajal and Kol. I don't know it myself. What is the difference? <laughs> You've got to read my book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Kajal goes inside the eye. It's specially formulated. Look up, darling. I've done this before. Yeah, because it's medicinal, isn't it? Right. I mean, it won't hurt the eye. Okay. You see, in a million I years, I, I could not go through this. What, oh. what is going on? I couldn't do it. Listen, Just... it's suffer for beauty. It's all for you. Oh. It's not really suffering. It's great fun. Now, I'm going to put coal under her eye. But you never put the coal inside no. in the rim. And a lot of people don't know that. And never use any pencil inside right. the rim, except right. the okay. kajal. The kajal. Never knew that. Okay. See? You've been I doing it wrong all these way. years. <laughs> I never knew where to get the kajal. I never uh, had the pencil. But it's a Joseph Magnus, right? Right, and I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> 12 to 2. And that's yeah. how you first now started pretty, with the bullet of the... Uh, that's how I started with the kajal. Just Cajal. that one product? And I was the, you know, the first lady who bought the kajal to America. And I think I did change the look of ladies' oh, eyes. Yeah. And uh, I've never looked back. How Could much more do we have to do on her? Well, I'm right putting now. touch of mascara on now. And that about wraps it up, right? Oh, not really. I mean, I've got to get done. Have we got time to do her lips? No, we, we really uh, don't. But uh, next time, maybe, Madeline, look up, okay? Look up, Patty. Madeline will be at the uh, Century City uh, Joseph Magnin <laughs> store tomorrow at the 12 noon, from noon until uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon to answer all of your questions. Patty, you look terrific. You're ready to go, <laughs> huh? Thanks, Reed. Thank you, Madeline, very, very much. Thank you for inviting me. We'll come back with Catherine Brady in just a moment and talk about incest. Madeline. Very well, nice thank to you. have you with us. Nice to be in Boston. You brought the pencil to the market, didn't you? For right. I Why? Why is that more efficient? Because it's the oldest way and most sensuous way of lining your eyes on the inside of the lower lid. This has been around for centuries. It's not new because, but it was the eye that introduced it to the United States. Something that I find fascinating, you say that the eye color should match our clothing and our makeup, but not exactly. How do you achieve that? Well, colors today, a woman should have a wardrobe of eye colors, and they can either match your hair, your eye color, or pick up something in your clothing. Now, obviously, if you're wearing a red dress like me, you wouldn't wear bright red eyeshadow. No, however, I noticed, though, that you have, like, a copper color up here. Right. Is that designed to pick up your dress and put it, pull it all together? Right. <laughs> how, I, about, how about the heaviness and the lightness in terms of day versus night? I mean, I think we're all worried about looking too made up. Well, I love makeup, and of course a lot of people say that to me, that they don't want to be too made up. But after all, it's the way you apply it. It has to be done, you know, professionally, which you can learn with help from beauty counters. You know, you have wonderful stores in Boston, such as Bloomingdale's, where I'm going to be later. Oh, great. And uh, we have professional makeup artists who teach women how to apply their eye makeup in a professional way. And we give them an eye chart to take home with them so that they can pin it up on their dressing tables and they can follow what the makeup artist did. Great. All right. Well, we've taken off my eye makeup. When we come back, we'll put it on. Madeline Mono is our <laughs> guest. Don't go away. Madeline Mono is a name you will be hearing much about if you're not familiar with the name already. 
in uh, her innovative packaging and uh, makeup and eye makeup, body makeup, I mean, you name it. And I'm sitting over here going, oh, show me that. Oh, let me see that. I've not seen all of the products before, and they're absolutely intriguing. And uh, with Madeline is Leslie Levine, her daughter. And we're going to uh, use Leslie. We grabbed her this morning, said, yes, you have to come be a model. And she's gorgeous. I am fascinated by the story, as I think a lot of women would be. Uh, Madeline has had many careers, many successful careers as an actress, as a model, uh, in uh, uh, England on BBC as the cover girl and also many national television spots, uh, commercials that is, and uh, let's see what else. You had your own, uh, 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 were you not in Antiques? Um, yes, Antiques and Fine Arts in St. James's London. You seem to have this golden touch, Madeline, <laughs> that everything you touch turns to great success. Is that true? Or are there some disappointments um, along the way? I think every life has its ups and downs, and I've had mine, but I think it's a question of taste. If you have good taste, you can apply it to anything in life, be it cosmetics or furnishings or packaging or clothes or husbands. Or <laughs> <laughs> now, what that reference might, uh, <laughs> might be, too, is uh, uh, marriage at 17 very early and uh, four children Yes. in England and I'm sure very happy during those years doing lots of very successful things besides being a wife and mother and then suddenly there was a divorce was there depression at that point did you think wow what's happened to my life oh definitely it was very traumatic I think it is for everybody. Yes, and that's one yes. of the reasons I mention it, because there are probably a lot of ladies going through that very thing now uh, and, and wondering how do they pick up the pieces and go on, because to look at your life now is just shimmers. I think it's fate. Fate. It was my fate to come to this country and uh, how did start you this business. Arthur Levine, your husband? I met him at a wedding in London. And he proposed the day he met me, just like the storybook oh, say. <laughs> and did you accept the day he proposed? No, I told him he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly had good days, though. You have to admit that. <laughs> was there, were you pushing yourself at that point to get out and do things when you went to this wedding? Um, yes, I've always been someone who, was, who liked doing things, always. I've always liked to be, that's why I opened an antique shop, because just being at home wasn't enough for me. But during that point of uh, life being kind of down, did, is that where you sort of had to grab for some courage to make yourself go on and do things that you perhaps didn't much feel like doing? A lot of people want to sort of uh, uh, baby themselves at those points and crawl away into a hole and uh, lick the wounds until they become well again. Well, Was that still uh, happening in your life when you met Arthur? I think I, 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 think I was very point. lucky in the fact that I have a wonderful family who stood ah. behind me, a brother and my parents who kind of boosted me up when I needed it most because I, I was in a very low state when I got divorced. I lost 25 pounds of weight. The um, hard way. Believe me, I put it all back on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the weight looks fantastic. It doesn't look like it's too much. You must have been way under. Yeah, so well, you, you met Arthur and said no, and then obviously uh, uh, you did eventually say well, yes. I lived in London. He lived in New York, and he used to kind of, um, how do you say, woo me uh, with letters and uh, tape letters. He used to send me these lovely tape letters so I could always hear his voice. Your father is, is marvelous. Is, has he always been a romantic? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I think the story's romantic. <laughs> How long did it take you to say yes? I eventually came over in about, uh, I think it was about a year, a good year, more than a year. And I came over, and we were married in London, actually. And then we came over, and um, we bought a house uh, on Long Island in Great Neck, near New York. And wherever I went, people would ask me about my eye makeup about this kajal which is inside my eye and I would come home and tell my husband about these stories and originally I had planned to open another antique shop in New York or at least I thought about it but yeah. didn't get very far and so many women asked me about my cosmetics that he said to me why don't you start a cosmetic company did you think he was crazy again or did yes, you think I, I said, said well, yes. <laughs> 
I said, don't be ridiculous. You know, with all the big cosmetic houses, this would be a foolish thing for me to do. And he said, darling, you can do absolutely anything. I have every faith in you. And so uh, I did. Did I you worry about competition? And he's right. It is a most competitive business. I think there is that in the fashion industry. Uh, just to chew yeah. people up and spit them out, you know. Yeah. Uh, it is very difficult to survive in those mm -hmm. businesses. Did any of that worry you? Well, once I'd made up my mind that I was going to do it, uh, the more people tried to put me off, the more it made me want to do it and be a success. It was like it really can't think of the, the right word for it, but it, it just gave me my impetuous to say, well, I can, I can do it. I'm going to show you all. And I did. <laughs> did you start small? Very small. I started with one product only. Which was? Called Indian Eyes. <laughs> and this is my lucky charm, Indian Eyes. Now, what and is Indian Eyes? Indian Eyes is a kajal which goes inside the eyes, and this is what the women in India use. And of course, when I came to America, it's safe. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but when I came to America, the natural look was really very much in. And, um, and that wasn't helpful. <laughs> but I just took it along to Henry Bendell's in New York and Bloomingdale's, and they were my first accounts, and I sold it there. And of course, I knew, my natural instincts told me that when I sold stores like that, I had a winner. Of course. And uh, I gradually opened more and more accounts. And at that time, I never had anybody working for me at all. You were making this yourself? No, it was made in India for me. Ah. But I used to uh, deliver it. I used to go in and help promote it. I was really a one-man uh, show. And uh, then I realized to be a success, obviously, I had to have people to help me. And so that was how the business started. I took on my first girl. And then I took on another girl to help promote Indian Eyes because I couldn't afford advertising. And um, I gradually kind of spread How around the How did you country. promote if you couldn't afford advertising outside of having some wonderful stores like Bloomingdale mm. be your first customers? Oh, we'd go into a store and we'd say to a lady just like you or to Leslie, can we show you Indian eyes? And they say, what's that? <laughs> and they let me show you. And within two seconds, I've whipped it into their eye. And they look in the mirror and they've already bought it. Because you see, Indian eyes will change a woman's whole look. It makes the eye whiter and larger. So once you wear it, you just, you can't. You are not satisfied with smaller eyes. Then. You're hooked. And you've already got it on. You cheated. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put some more on just to show. <clears throat> now this goes just yeah. inside the eye. Yes, you see? It goes inside, or just like that. That's all it does. There we are. Hey, Presto. Oh, beautiful. Now you do see the that? other one. Do the other one now. Because we've got the camera nice and close. There we are. That's it. Oh, that looks You see gorgeous. how shiny her eyes look? Yes. Very sensuous and white. What do, what do you do not use it up above? As when a you liner. can. This is what you can do. You well, see. what do you have on? <laughs> are you using a, a, I'll, I'll show you, a liner? I'll show you a little trick <clears throat> with this little mirror. To make the base of your eyelashes look darker darker and thicker, you take the little Indian eyes and you go under your top lid. I don't know if you can see that, what I'm doing. Yes. But I'm rubbing that under the eye. Can you see? Yes, I can. I'll show you one, Leslie. Perhaps the camera will... We lift up the eyelid and you go under there. Okay, we need to see on this one. This is the one that's near the camera, yes. <laughs> is my arm hiding? There <laughs> we go. Beautiful. Does that hurt at all, Leslie? No, 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 no. no. It just tickles a little <laughs> bit, obviously. <laughs> How often do you have to apply it? A couple of times a day or three times, you know. And that's it. Necessary. That's the magic of it. And it really does change... Uh, your whole look. Oh, I can see. So that was how I started. And my philosophy was not to be like anybody else, not to copy any other cosmetic company, but to keep my own individuality. Did you have to work hard at finding out what others had so that you could be unique, or did you just go with your instincts? I, fo I always follow my instincts and everything. But I could see that the, there's a lot of magic was missing from the counters, and I think I'm supplying that magic today. And that's what it's a lot yes. of fantasy too. See, this is another new product I have, which is called Arabian Lights. 
What does it do? Arabian Nights is um, loose powders. See, now most companies sell eyeshadows which are pressed. Yes. And therefore, you don't get this, this looseness. Now, this is one that's open. Let me show you this. This one's called Pasha Pink. Oh, you see, and you dip your brush in. And I also believe that everybody should apply their makeup with brushes. This is very important. Why? It stays longer, and it's the professional way to do it. It's what I learned when I was on the stage. Right. It's what the models do. And uh, I saw these lovely bamboo brushes to apply makeup with. See, and we'll put some on her cheekbone. And it'll catch the light. Now, this same little powder that I've put on her cheeks, I can use on her eyes. That's marvelous. It gives a little shimmer. Yeah. See, we we'll put some there. And you, you apply it very lightly. Oh, yeah. Now, let me explain also that in the top of these little jars, you get another powder. I don't know whether you can see this, like two. Yes. All right. Now, this is, this is how it looks when it's open. There's a little tiny pot of iridescent. We call that iridescent. This is your highlighter. You can apply, let me see, you can use this either as a color or mix it on, to, um, or on the cheeks or anything. This is very, very pretty which is a, sort of an off-white, which is marvelous. The white itself is, mm. is always too stark. It's got kind of pinky Peach. mauve in mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's a very pretty color. See? You can have great fun with this makeup. I mean, this is... My makeup is for very creative people. What about the woman who is afraid of makeup? What do you advise her to do? Well, I don't know how anybody could be afraid of makeup. I have she must be afraid of, of life. <laughs> well, yeah, that could be possible. But a number of women will say, oh, I do so want to, to do that. How do you do that? And then they say, well, I've tried that before, and uh, I, it doesn't look very good on me. I wonder sometimes if that's the case or if they are just not used to seeing this mm. marvelous, shiny, mm. uh, made, created look. Well, I think that if a woman is scared or a little nervous, that she should approach people uh, in the department stores and specialty stores or drug stores where they keep cosmeticians who are trained by all the cosmetic companies to apply makeup. Very good. And we have a training program so that whenever we open an account anywhere in the country, we send out people to train our cosmeticians in to the art of makeup. We are running out of time. Oh, I also, I have to show. Yes, it is. I have to show you this. But I think I'm going to open this correctly. Yes, this is my new thing. This is. May I say the name? Yes. This is called Twinkling, Glimmering, Shimmering, Blinking Body Glitter. This is pieces of silver suspended in a rose jelly, which you apply to your décolletage, your shoulders, your hairline, right? or your hair. Did this I do is it really right? Studio 54, you know. <laughs> That's Studio it. 39 at the moment. <laughs> did, I, did I apply it right or not enough? A little more, a little more. A, a, little, a little more, more. more. so that you can see what I'm... There. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't put it at the right place, Looks but this will give you an idea. Yeah. It is great fun. You would, uh, I would assume wear this only in the evening. Well, yes. <laughs> oh, hello there. <laughs> All kinds of products, and if you would like to see, we were intrigued, Sylvia and I, by the way, Madeline has packaged this. This is, uh, this is sort of little, everything yeah. at once that one yes. needs, yes. and you don't see too many of them like this. You've yes. got your blush, your rouge, you've got your yeah. mascara, all of the things together, and it is great fun, and I would suggest that you get by Sackowitz. Uh, today, Madeline will be there. As a matter of fact, she's supposed to be there right now, <laughs> and she will be there today at Post Oak, and uh, tomorrow... Champion. At Champions, uh, Sackowitz again. Yes. And uh, again, the lady's name is Madeline Mono. A woman of the 80s, whether she's a career girl, a mother, or a housewife, her image, as you know, is very important. And makeup is certainly an important part of that image. So here with us to share some good advice on the subject of makeup is a woman who really knows from a number of various areas, Madeline Mono. Madeline was an actress. She has her own line of makeup. A number of people in Hollywood know that Mono knows. Uh, <laughs> That's and nice. And do indeed. Your makeup, just looking at you when I walked in, is beautiful. You have put together, I don't know if your television at home can pick this up, but you have put together, it looks like art on your eyes, but it yeah. is not 
overdone. M makeup is an art. Yes, it is. And we all do yes. not feel we have the it's artistry in us. It's a lovely art. And uh, I love putting on my makeup. In fact, it only takes me 10 minutes. And no one ever believes that it just takes me 10 minutes. It took you 10 minutes to make up your eyes? That's all. What's your secret? Just and experience with it? Often people remark, well, your makeup stays on all day. Well, first of all, it stays on all day because my formulas are, you know, fantastic, I think. And secondly, a makeup art artist told me many years ago when I was working for Max Factor doing a commercial, mm -hmm. she said, never touch your face. Never touch your face. Ah. You'll get wrinkles. And of course, being vain, I never forgot that. I've never touched my face the rest of the day. You mean you know, once you put the makeup on, don't touch your face see, again? You see a lot of women, they sit like this, yes. or they go like this, or yes. like this. But you mustn't do that. You just you train touch. yourself never to touch your face. Now, you have very good skin. Is there a secret to that? Is it, is it moisturizing the skin? Well, I think enough? a lot of it is hereditary. Yes. I am English, but I have lived in America for 11 years now. And my skin is just as nice as the day I came. Yes, it is. Um, beautiful. So I try to look after it. I eat all the right foods. Uh -huh. um, I don't take caffeine. I don't smoke. And see what happens and, when um, you do the right things? Don't sit in the sun too much. I do sometimes, but A then I, I'm sure to use sunscreens and things like that. What do you say? How do you suggest someone who's watching right now who maybe has chosen because they don't feel they have the ability not to use much makeup. Where do they start? What kinds of things? How do you know, for example, what colors to buy for yourself? Do you go by the color of the eyes? We have similar coloring um, in eyes, but I, I never would have thought of putting the artistry of those colors together. Plus, I wouldn't feel I had the personal ability to do it as well as you did. Well, <laughs> there is a lot of mystery in applying makeup, and women are very scared of it. In fact, three years ago, I wrote a book called Make Eyes with Madeline Mona, which was published by Harper and Row. And I think it's sold out in most stores, but you can get it from the public library. Yes. And in this book, it does show you everything, step by step, how to choose the right color with your eyes or what you're wearing mm -hmm. that day. What do you suggest for the career person compared to the person who is at home? Um, well, I, I don't see where the difference comes. You see, I'm not a person who gets intimidated by my surroundings. Uh -huh. And I think even if you're a lawyer or even if you are at home and you're a housewife, I mean, I brought up a large family myself, but I always put my makeup on every day of my life. Yes. It's one of those quirks I have. Mm -hmm. I never leave my house unless I look nice. Which is good. If you, if you yeah. feel you look nice, you, you probably end up feeling... Mm -hmm. better about yourself and then one thing mm -hmm. feeds off the I, other I think it does, it's true it makes you feel wonderful it gives you a lift and it's far better to spend money on looking nice than going to psychiatrists and all those crazy things that women do <laughs> yeah what about cleansing the skin at night we often hear do not go to bed without washing the makeup off how do you prefer to take makeup off I prefer to take it off with a, a very nice herbal cleansing cream and tissue it off and then I apply uh, like a skin tonic to okay. so that my face is really clean. Myself, personally, I never sleep with a cream on my face at night. I can't bear it. I, but you I, still moisturize it, you must, or your skin wouldn't be as No, I moisturize it in the morning. Aha, uh -huh. okay. But I, I made a rule all my, that I made as a young woman that when I got married, I would never go to bed with cream on my face <laughs> or my hair in rollers. You know, it's been one of those things that... I just promised myself I would never do it because I just don't think it's fair for the men, you know. That's right. When you wake up in the morning and see yourself, <laughs> yes. there is a shock otherwise. Yeah. That's why you can feel good when you look so. all right in the morning. A little interesting tidbit here that we might tell you about is Madeline was telling me before you joined us that in the movie, uh, what's the name? With Moscow on the Hudson. I was going to say to Russia with love, but Moscow on the Hudson. With Robin Williams. Right. Mm -hmm. Share the little story with them and you can look for it next well, time. Well, this was very, very exciting. Robin Williams is in this wonderful film which last week was in its seventh smash hit. Um, he plays the part of a Russian who defects in, of all places, Bloomingdale's New York. And where does he defect? But behind the Madeline Mono counter <laughs> and falls in love with this beautiful girl who works for me. <laughs> So I get all this fantastic publicity, yes, you and you see the counter with all the colors right throughout the film, because I'm yes. a color house, by the yes. way, I specialize in colors. And colors. Mm -hmm. So think color this spring, is that what we should do? Yes. Um, right. Colors are very pastel this spring, very pale all and right. pastel. All right. Thank you, Madeline. Thank Good you. Good indeed to have you Thank here. Thank you for inviting for products. me. Back over with more Live on Five. I want to read to you from uh, Women's Wear Daily. It says here, I intend to become the biggest name in the cosmetic industry. 
Uh, the lady who made that statement is Madeline Mono, and she is with us, and she is beautiful, and she's at Higby's, and how nice it is to have a lovely lady like you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Now, uh, you believe this, certainly, that you are going to be the biggest person in the cosmetic industry. I certainly do. You're alive, and you're vibrant, <laughs> and you're exciting to see. Thank you. Thank you. And you're English? I'm British, yes. I've lived in America about three and a half years. And you didn't want to come here? No, I didn't want to come, but uh, I got married to a, my second husband, who's um, an American citizen. But that's actually why you he never answered my England. letters. Is that it? <laughs> and that's how I came out to America, for love, really, which is the best reason, I think. I'm making up your eyes. They look so natural, and yet they're so different and so lovely. Is mm. there a way that you do it? Well, the secret is Indian eyes. And this is what started me in the cosmetic industry. Ah, I but something came before that. Let's point our fingers at each other now. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> huh? You remember there was a gentleman, who, was someone who told you in England? Oh, yes, this is a true story. Um, before I came to live in America, uh, I had my fortune told by a clairvoyant in Sussex in England, and his name was Nazir. And I went into this very tiny room, and um, this Indian man was sitting there. And he just asked me the date of my birthday. I'm a Leo, by the way, which says a lot because Leo people are very ambitious. And he said to me that my whole life would change and in a year and a half, I would marry a man within 24 hours. I wouldn't ask anybody's opinion. I would know absolutely that was the right thing for me and go ahead and marry this man and go and li live across the world. He said, you will live surrounded by water. And I live on Long Island, and it's, I live surrounded by water. So I think that came true. He then told me that I would travel, my life would begin, and that when I came to live in America, I would find true happiness, and that my life would literally begin. He said, you've, you've always thought you've been happy. He said, but it's not the same thing. He said, you're going to find out what the real thing's all about. Does he make much in the cosmetics? He doesn't know anything. He's just a clever boy. But I'm saying, did he say that you would do uh, big in the business world? No, he didn't say anything about cosmetics at all. But you're happy. All. Oh, and how I love it. And you're beautiful. Thank you. Before, before you show us about the Indian mm. eyes, tell, tell us about uh, you were a, uh, a cover girl. Oh, yes. Well, years ago, when I was a young girl, I used to go to a theatrical school in London. That's three years ago, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, with uh, Jean Simmons and Jean Marsh of upstairs and downstairs fame. This school was called Ada Foster School of Dramatic Art, and I was one of the Foster girls, and it was there that I learned to sing and dance and to apply makeup with brushes. Uh. I was in my first show when I was 12 years old at the Duke of York's Theatre. And I really had a very wonderful training, which I think has now helped me that I'm in the cosmetic industry. Well, I, now, uh, uh, of course, you were uh, uh, in a commercial for Mac McLean's. Oh, yeah. I was the McLean's girl for oh, many years. I did about three films. I used to do the tongue test. Shall I show you? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I have to hold my mirror up for that one. Ah, I remember I you well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how, it was a little bit slow. How can we forget? And I right? think that it went out to Canada, mm -hmm. that film. And then I was the Pond's Bride. I did about three films for Max Factor. I did a film for Coty. And I mean, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I myself would end up in the cosmetic and industry. And you're going to be the biggest name in the cosmetic industry. The name is Madeline Mono, a beautiful name, and it is her name. Now tell us about Indian Eyes. Well, I, the reason I got into this business was that whenever I walked down the street, when I came to live in America, people would come up and ask me about my eyes. And they say, what are you wearing in your eyes? And what I had on was something called Kajal, which is, comes from Bombay in India. And it was applied, um, it's a paste form, and you apply it into the eye with a little stick, which of course could be dangerous because if the stick would slip, you could mm -hmm. damage the eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that would be a very bad way of marketing it. So I had it made in a bullet shape. And you've hit the mark with it, certainly. 
I hope ah, you can see it. I you can. see? Yes. And so you just take this little tiny bullet and you look up and you apply it inside the bottom of the eye like that. Madeline Mono. You pretty thing, you. <laughs> and that was how I started in the cosmetic industry. I got this little thing and I packaged it very nicely in silver and black and off I went to Bloomingdale's and Bendale's in New York and knocked on the door and said, I've got something fantastic to show you. And I got my first orders on this one product. Well, I, I must hand it to you. You've done, that. You've done all of this on your own. You uh, thought of the product, you rapped on the doors, you've done your own promotion, you're going around live and vibrant and letting the people see you, certainly here at Higby's at the present time. Yeah. And uh, you, everyone else is sort of a, a name in the past, yes. right? Well, I think I'm a name, and uh, hopefully for the future, because I think I know that women want something different. And the whole basis of my thinking... So do men. <laughs> I think the whole basis of my small success that I'm having so far is that I'm not a me too and I'm not an as well and every product that I bring out is completely different from every other company I'm the first company in America to have a flat pencil with two colors one on one, on one side and one on the yes. other you see everything I do is different now you can get the most marvelous effects with this pencil this is the Indian Eye part two range mm -hmm. Then I have a wonderful way of powdering your nose. This is to introduce face powder to a generation of young girls who don't use powder. And this is marvelous. This is called powder pats. And you just, it's very hygienic as well. And you tear off a little sheet of paper. Let me show you. This is the first time I've ever seen And this is for men as well after they've been shaving. Shall I try it on your Please mate? do. Okay, and you just go like that. And it gets rid of all the grease. Very soothing after shaving. Now you have a look at yourself. How pretty you look. <laughs> you devil, you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. See the way the grease has gone? Oh, yes. What a greasy thing yeah. I was before that. I didn't realize <laughs> look that. Look at that. Oh, dear. I'm going to go wash right after this. Because I'm going to use it over and over again. You thought of that yourself? That's the first time I've seen anything like that in the cosmetics. Yeah, line. I like to do unusual things to bring some excitement into the business. I have another marvelous thing here called Mono Magic, which is done like a little wand. And Mono Magic can turn anybody's day makeup into an evening makeup look. You just take your ordinary day color. You won't be able to see this, I think, on the television. But for instance, you put, take your day pen color. Right. And then if, for instance, you were going to a party straight from the office or wherever you are, you put the Mono Magic on top of that, and that becomes an iridescent color. Can you see? Yes. And that's called Mono Magic. So... I think everything you have is Mono Magic. <laughs> I go to bed with a dictionary at night thinking up names. <laughs> for, you mean for your product? Yes. It's not so easy. When you think, you know, of all the color blues there are, you have to find a different color name for blues. Yes. You think about it. <laughs> I, 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 do, I, none come to mind at the, at the moment. So did, did, are you into the perfume? Is it? I'm bringing out my first fragrance next year. And, uh, Is it the one that you had before yes, we went on? Yes, yes. Is it must, delightful? I'm, oh! <laughs> you like it? Oh, yes, yeah. I do. Yes, in fact, when I came into the airport yesterday in Cleveland, a man came up to me and said, I don't know what you're wearing, but you smell terrific. I, I, said, <laughs> I was so thrilled to just hear that. one man oh no it happens all over the place well I was going to say <laughs> you know just, uh, Cleveland is lax in that if only one man <laughs> came up to you to say that yeah. but you, you are at Higby's and uh, it is called Madeline Mono that is the name of the cosmetic and uh, she has come a long way okay. and there's going to be another article about you in Women's Wear Daily is there not oh there was another one last week a very big one which was called Three Women and this is the story, how they interviewed Diane von Furstenberg, Adrian Arpel, and myself as the three women, um, like the next generation in the cosmetic industry. I don't know the other two. Oh, well, they're both very charming ladies. I'm sure they are. Um, Diane von Furstenberg is known for her dresses. I've forgotten about her already. <laughs> and Adrian Arpel is more into skin care. Yes. My makeup is high fashion. I'm color. 
You are beautiful. I'm the haute couture of the cosmetic industry. And you own this station now, too. Because <laughs> I just gave it to you. How do you like you. that? All right? Madeline Mono, a lovely name, a lovely lady, and a beautiful cosmetic. Thank you so very much, Madeline. Thank you for inviting me. Alice will be back in a moment. When was that, that you came to America? Uh... Well, I divorced and I, I married my second husband, my second husband, he's still my husband. Yes, your husband, husband right? <laughs> I married my second husband in um, 1972. Oh, so you're just, you're still a new bride here. Well, it's, if I'm, if, years, we always say, if, in 10 years <laughs> is this year, we always say, my husband and we joke and we say, if we make it, and please God, we'll make it. Well, yeah. 10 years is, uh, is pretty yeah. good by yeah. these days, standards. Right. it's wonderful. And so, to let the people know, evidently he, helped you get the business started, but really more or less as a hobby? He really kind of wanted you to have something to keep occupied with? Well, I think my husband's a very clever man. Um, evidently. And he wanted me to be happy in America. Uh -huh. So he said to me one day, honey, you know, why don't you start a cosmetic company? Because all these women had come up to me in the streets and asked me about my eye makeup. Well, certainly, it's beautiful. I, I wonder if they're getting that wow. on camera. This is quite, it's not too much for me these days. I've gone real, you know, getting older. But when I came here so um, 10 years ago, I was really into very dark looks and very darkly lined kajal in my eyes. And wherever I would go, people would say, what are you wearing? inside your eyes. I want to get this out and show this to them. Oh. <laughs> and this is a true story, it. you know. The, the, uh, this is actually a true story. We this would happen it. to me four or five times a day. I'd be in Lord and & Taylor's, I'd be in Bloomingdale's, and these strange ladies would come up to me because American women are very friendly. Yes, they you are. See? They, they are, and it's nice that you would notice If that. you were in Harrods in London, maybe a man would come up to you, I'm but a woman is not going to come up to you in Harrods and ask you about your makeup. But in America, a woman is very, very friendly, and she, if she likes something, she says, you know, that's a wonderful color. What are you wearing inside your eyes? And I but would that is say, very I'd say, this is, this is Kajal. Well, my husband said to me, darling, why don't you start a cosmetic company? And uh, actually, that was what I did. And I formed my company in 1974. And I decided that there was quite a void in the cosmetic industry. I had looked around and done quite a bit of research. And I thought a few things were missing. And you have um, been filling the void ever since with these, I've got to I've show tried, them, these I've wonderful tried, things. Yeah. You have yeah. a, you started with the Kajal pencil, right. which is where she gets <clears throat> this beautiful dark look on her mm -hmm. eyes. And I've got some on too. And she just gave me some. Samples to show you. You've got a new lipstick out. Oh, I have. Perfume. I have a whole cosmetic line now, and I'm known really uh, internationally as a color house. I'm not a treatment house. I wish I'm we color. Had more time. So do for I. You to tell us about <laughs> it. But if they're going to read the book, we'd like all of you to get the book. It's available in paperback now. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being here me. with us. Really enjoyed it. Was really having super. You. I wish I had more time to tell you about my Indian eyes. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we'll have you back, and you can. I think we'll be doing another segment, and perhaps you can That's tell us wonderful. about it then. Good. I enjoyed it a lot. Well, you may want to go wash your face before we begin this program. I say that because today we're going to talk about cosmetics and the cosmetic industry and a real Long Island success story, one of the best you're going to hear in a long, long time. My guest today on Long Island Spotlight is Madeleine Mono, who, a uh, name I'm sure you've heard. Madeleine, welcome to the program. You know, we, we heard about you, uh, tell me, about 10 years ago? That's when I started. When you started. Years ago. And how did you start? I remember we were thinking about exotic eye makeup at that mm -hmm. time. What was it called? I started with uh, Indian eyes. Indian eyes. Right. And why were you able to, to uh, gain such popularity at that time with Indian eyes? Well, I think at that time the all natural look was very much in evidence, and that I just came along with this very sensuous eyeliner that women could wear, even women that had contact lenses could use the product. And it definitely changed the look of a woman's eyes. And at that time it sold for four dollars. And for four dollars she should just become exotic looking. There's something for four dollars, <laughs> right? And everybody, you know, once one woman w was wearing it, then all her friends rushed in to buy it and it became an instant success. But what gave you the idea? 
Well, I've always followed fashion, and uh, I was brought up in a fashion family in England. And uh, at one time, I noticed that the French models in the French magazines were lining the inside of their eyes. So I thought I would attempt to do it myself. And I bought some Indian Kajal uh, from a shop in London in a little pot. And I put, put this stuff into my now you eyes. Put it, describe, you put it under your uh, bottom well, lid. Is that right? This, if I may show you, yes, is, show is us. The, this is the product that I started with. Ah. And um, I don't know whether the camera can zoom in on this. Oh, and, he, and he'll, get he this will. little chuchy thing here. Uh -huh. And then what you do, I don't have a mirror, but you just go inside, right inside your eye, and you just run it inside the rim. And no one was wearing uh, makeup under their eye Not quite really, like no. that. Really. But this goes inside the eye, you see, mm. it lines the rim. Mm. And um, that was my first product. And then I just started to add other products and always trying to be different. And then eventually I came out with this product, which was called Arabian Light Powders. And, this and what's was different in what is that going well, to do Well, this for is, these are, uh, as I used it on Barry when, um, I did the makeup demonstration. Uh -huh. Which we're um, going to see in a minute. Right. These are whoops, oh. loose powders, if, if the camera could pick it up, you yes. see? Yes. And you can sure. use these a multitude of ways. And also, in the top of every jar, you get your second powder, which is called iridescent. Oh, that's wonderful. A little piggyback. So this is, a, you know, once I bought this out, everybody started really taking a lot of notice and saying, you know, who the hell is Madeline Mono? <laughs> and it didn't take them long to find out. Yeah. Well, I said you were a success story, and we love on Long Island to hear about particularly women uh, starting from scratch. And literally, you did. You started uh, in your home. You were I started a housewife. In, in my house in Great Neck. My husband gave me $7,500, and um, that's how I started the business. And I was just so determined to make a success I'd come to live in, in America just a few months previously, and I really didn't have any friends. So I kind of threw myself into, into this business, into making it a success. And but Madeleine, Madeleine, did you have any business experience well, before? Well, my, my early background, I was an actress. I, that's not known for business experience, <laughs> Madeleine. <laughs> well, that's I know, but it taught me a lot, you see, because it taught me about makeup. Oh, yes. I went to a theatrical school with Jean Simmons and Jean Marsh. I was in films with Joan Collins and Diana Dawes and lots of famous people. And we all we had to learn to, how to do the makeup. And did I you would, do your own makeup? We in did England? our own makeup, you see. Not on the films, but on the stage. We always did our own makeup. And my mother bought me my first theatrical makeup box, which I still have with the original grease paint in it. So that's when I first really got the love of makeup. And then I think the fact that my family were in fashion, I've always been in influenced by color and fashion. Mm -hmm. And um, at any rate, when I was 17, I was offered a film contract, and I turned it down, and I got married, and I had four children. And um, during that period, when the children were growing up, I used to do television commercials. And then when my youngest child was seven, I did open a business. And that was my first business, and it was antiques and fine arts, and I was in King Street, St. James's, London. And I had that shop for three and a half years. I see. So. And then I got divorced, and um, the walls came crumbling down, so to speak, and I had to pick myself up and kind of start another life. And I met my second husband at a wedding in London, and he proposed the day he met me. And I eventually How came... Romantic. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't look really like he's romantic, but he is, you see. <laughs> you could never tell by a man from his uh, exterior. <laughs> so I came to live in Great Neck. And uh, originally, I thought perhaps I'd open up another antique shop. But I didn't want to do that because of the security in Manhattan. And my husband said, no, honey. He said, I really don't want you going to New York every day and doing all that commuting. So now I'm commuting all over the world. <laughs> Madeline, what, how did you develop that first product, the Indian eyes, the coal pencils? It was made for me in Bombay, India. And I had it made there, brought over to New York, and packaged it in what was to become my signature mm -hmm. packaging, black, silver, and white, and took it into Henry Bendel and got my first order. 
and from there <laughs> on it was just one thing after another <laughs> what was that what was the next thing that sort of developed along the line you, you had really not thought of yourself as a businesswoman before that time you'd been a model an actress a fashion designer but uh, I'd also had an antique shop in London so there had been a lot of other kinds this of is my third in career your background. <laughs> third time lucky <laughs> very lucky yeah. indeed and also very talented because you came into the makeup world at a time when people were wearing the very natural no makeup look and turned that whole thing around with a lot of drama why why did you feel was that your your stage background or something you felt that people needed a little more well I did go to a theatrical school in London mm -hmm. when I was a child and I think that uh, makeups it's in the blood so to speak it's, I've always loved it and I love color my family are in the fashion business so the two combined have brought out something in me which mm -hmm. I've put I think to good use well, I think we'll take a look right now at the before. This is the completely natural Beth Hansen as she arrived this morning. We had a chance to do some uh, taping of her. Take a look at the before. This is with absolutely no makeup. And we'll see um, the side, let's see, yeah, side view. That's there, there you see the new, the new Beth Hansen. What were some of the things that you did that, to bring out? What are some of the features that you looked at in Beth that you decided needed emphasis? Well, the first thing we did, we put hideaway cream under her eyes mm -hmm. to lighten that area. And then we used several colors on her eyes. We used the um, Arabian light powders. Mm -hmm. We do these powders in about 13 colors. And on Beth, uh, Jean-Paul has used um, Oasis Green. Why um, did you choose the particular colors you did? Because I think a lot of women have questions about that. Do you work with your eye color? Do you work with the, whatever you're wearing, your skin tones, your hair? And what are the things that you take into consideration when you choose colors for eye makeup? Well, you either look at a woman's face, her hair and her eyes, mm -hmm. as you said, or perhaps, for instance, like today, I'm wearing purple. Mm -hmm. So I've picked up the purple in my eyes today. So it's really just a matter of what you feel like doing mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. Well, makeup should be fun. I've noticed that you also have used gold on the inside mm. corners of your eye, a gold mm. shadow. I love gold. And that's for, that is just because you like it that way. What, does it mm. do anything in particular to the eye? Bringing, you know, some people talk about either bringing or diminishing certain I features. I think I like to see a lot of gold during the summertime, mm -hmm. especially when the skin is a little tanned. And it brings out the tan. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to, to Beth. Here is, here is Jean-Paul. He is in the process now of what? what is, there's He's a just put the finishing... Um, touches with the uh, clear lucite brush that he's using, mm -hmm. blusher brush. He's using satin apricot. Uh, we call it satin rouge. Mm -hmm. But it is a, it's not a cream rouge. It's a, no, it's, it's a, a blusher, powdery. but I call mm -hmm. it rouge. I've just got fed up of that word blusher. <laughs> <laughs> and he's contouring her face. Now he's just uh, adding to her, under her eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Just adding a little more. Well, what he's doing is putting on the glamour, you yeah. see. <laughs> but you don't do the heavy kind of contouring. There, there are some makeup people who do a lot of the deep hollowing shadows, a lot mm. of the shadows along people's noses, which, at least when you see them in person, it might mm. photograph beautifully, but mm. it stands out immediately. What, what are your feelings about that? Well, I think some people, they definitely do get carried away with contouring their faces too much, mm -hmm. and they end up looking like they're going in for a photographic session. And, they shouldn't look like that. What are some of the new colors that people can expect to see more of? Definitely very vivid colors. Mm -hmm. We have um, fabulous colors in, in our new collection of makeup. Uh, cerises, bright reds. Um, these are the new things. Uh, wicked fuchsia, I call it. Um, and I'm sure that people have been noticing the glitter that you're wearing. Is this well. the new look body makeup? <laughs> I don't have too much on because it's, really, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I didn't go all out. But is but that the gold and the silver? Is and This is called looks? Twinkling, Glimmering, Shimmering, Blinking Body Glitter. Mm -hmm. And this glitter has started quite a rage. Um, Wherever I sell it, you know, uh, United Kingdom, London, everywhere, they just go mad for it. You can put it all over your body, down your arms. You can even put it up your legs, under your stockings or over them. We do it in wonderful colors like rainbow descents, which you can rub into your blue jeans if you want to get a different look <laughs> on your blue jeans. Well, it is different, I must say. Yeah. It's maybe better than the, the old patches. <laughs> Jack's over there. Let's see what his, his uh, feelings are. Come on, Jack. You've got to say some awfully nice no, things. I would, no, I'd be happy to say that's very brave to go in and sit down and have all that right on camera. Thank you very much. It's interesting, the, the gold. How do you feel about having gold all over you like that? 
Uh, yes, I give you wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a mistake. <laughs> no, I think it's a very different and glamorous look. I think it's a very nice. It looks terrific. I like it, too. I think yeah. it's terrific. And if you would like to know more about how you can improve your makeup... Oops. <laughs> uh, that's right. I'm you. married to a, the wrong person. <laughs> Come on What's in. Here? If Maury would like to know how to improve his makeup, <laughs> Madeline Mono is going to be at uh, Joseph Magden this afternoon from 12.30 to 2.30, and you can ask her questions and take a look at some of the beautiful new products.